So the first thing you have to do with Elf Out is you always let the intro rock. And <laughs> <laughs> Whip. Sorry, it's a cute one though. It's very cute. So I know that I was watching a few videos on her mm -hmm. and I heard that basically the point of Elf Out is to throw your grenade at people like yep. that. <laughs> and that it sucks. Yeah. Generally. P Pineberry is definitely like the first thing that comes into mind that makes you just say, oh, fuck this character. I love that it stops your momentum mm -hmm. when you pull it out. Yep. There's like, okay, the honest reason it's not just that she's very wife city, <laughs> it's also that Elfel is very like, her buttons feel really fun to press. Mm -hmm. Like, Particularly uh, the handgun one. Yep, the, the it's it's Cable's standing fierce from Marvel Two, where he just fucking yeah. stands there and shoots you gangster style. I love it. Yeah, the Glock and the 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 gun behind her back in her her air dust is mm -hmm. really cute too. Um, wow, you know, I have gotten hit by that endless times, and I never actually saw what she's doing. Yeah, it's like so funny. I love. Speaking of how much I love fighting game animation, mm -hmm. it's really neat how this animation is so fast when, like, you can't even see it yep. if it's unblocked. Yeah. But um, if it, like, hit stops you, then you, like, can see it actually right. for way longer. Yeah, there, there is a lot of love that goes into these animations that then gets missed until you've seen them, like, a thousand times. Yeah, it's kind of neat that it's a gift that keeps on giving. Mm -hmm. um, for a game that you play all the time. So, so what are the yeah. when it, when it comes to Elfelt's tool set? Like, what are the things that you you kind of you feel more comfortable with and less comfortable with? Um, I don't really like know how to like. I've experimented in training mode. I've mm -hmm. even done like most of her like beginner combos. Got it. But I don't really know like what to how to kind of like put it all together. Mm -hmm. um, I know that like, I like this. Yeah, it's I know a real good button. This. Yep. Um, and and also how you should be confirming it into. Yeah. I do know how to, oh my God. <laughs> throw ranges. Yeah, um, so throws in general are one of the things that's gonna probably take a lot of getting used to for you in this game. Um, but that's that's less character specific stuff and more just guilty gear stuff. So we can, we, we can go through some of that. Um, but yeah, her. I think like one of the things that was interesting about her and kind of the reason why I was like, well, maybe I'll try her, some combination of her and Kai, mm -hmm. um, is because they both have like a similar sort of like good pokes and space control. Yep. And like a poke. <laughs> That's also basically like, or a kind of like ranged attack that's also an okay Zeme tool. Yep. For whatever reason, that makes a lot more sense to me than some of the other stuff. Sure. Yeah, certainly, uh, Pineberry is like, is the gift that keeps on giving, right? It basically does in one move what other characters would usually have to spend two moves on, right? Which is, right. you got. You got an arcing projectile that can, that can, depending on the arc, control a lot of space, right? And then once it's out, it functions as, it's kind of like having an assist in Marvel 2 or something, right? You have a hitbox mm -hmm. that doesn't depend on uh, you doing anything, right? As long as you don't get hit, uh, it's, it, it'll, it'll, it's out there and it's a threat. And the risk is, of course, that if you if you're holding uh, Pineberry, then you can get hit, and you explode, and you can convert into combos off that. Right. But in terms of the risk reward, it's pretty generous. And this is actually the weakest version of Elfelt's Pineberry. It had it, been been nerfed, I think, once or twice. Oh, no, really? Yeah. Sign Elfelt was a different beast entirely. Jeez, I can't play if she. <laughs> she was even worse before. Yeah. Yeah, so when, when I started playing Elfelt, I found that starting with uh, learning how to just use Pineberry is a pretty good first step. And then after that, you can get into some of the other stuff. So, how, how are you on shotgun stuff? Um, 
shotgun stuff actually makes a lot. Like, it's one of those things that. Damn it. <laughs> I really thought I was gonna throw you that one time. I have learned. I've noticed that I have a bunch of bad habits from Guilty Gear um, when I play uh, Grand Blue. Because mm -hmm. I keep on trying to, like, do stupid throw tricks that don't work yeah. at all. <laughs> Yeah, it's the like, difference oh, between slow. Gears throws and pretty much every other game's throws will ruin you. Yeah, it really makes me sad because I can't, like, reversal throw, which is a crazy thing to do. Yeah. Um, but it, sometimes I get paid for it in this game. Um, so have you started messing with her shotgun stuff at all or not? Um... So I know a little bit about what to do with it. Okay. Um, I know that she's got like, um, I know that it's like a mix up. Oh. Ooh. Oh, nice. Oh no. Oh. I noticed that you can block her grenade, which is really funny. Hmm? You mean like you can hit it out of the air and stuff? No, you can you can block your own grenade. Oh yeah yeah yeah. You can actually <laughs> it's funny, you can you can use it strategically. Um, so when you block stuff in the air, you can get your air options back. Oh really? Yeah, I, I forget if it's just on IB or not. I think it's I think it's no matter what. Uh, so I can do shit like, if I if I time it right, let's see. Oh no, yeah, maybe it's on IBU. <laughs> Wait. But but you can use it to like get an extra air jump or whatever. Ah. Uh. Oh no. Draw? No, I think you're hey. still gonna win that. <laughs> <laughs> Cute. <laughs> Those are really good poses. I don't yeah. think I've seen either of those before. I, I'm just appreciating her back walk right now. Yeah, her little, like... I like her kind of... Her, like, skirt holding. Whenever she moves. It's real good. Um, okay. Um, so, yeah, I kind of, like, understand the shot that, like... Um, the shotgun is like this really murderous like pressure tool. Yeah. Um it sure is. Especially when you're when you're in the corner. Mm -hmm. Um for um But one of the things about this game that's kind of like been at least a little bit of a barrier is definitely the um like trying to figure out what to do when um when I have the advantage. Yeah. Um, and actually, I don't really know what to do about that even in, like, Grand Blue. I was just beginning to learn what to do in, um, Eunice. Yeah. Because I had, like, I knew Orie's tools, but even then, I would say I actually, like, I would get somebody in the corner and then not quite be sure, like, really what my options were. Sure. Other than throw, um, and high. Yep. Like... It's kind of like the whole idea of like what a safe jump is and how to do that is still a little weird for me. Okay, um, I can. So the the easy question, which is just to answer, which is just general, right? Is uh, a safe jump is basically a timing on a jump where, uh, so when you're jumping in on someone and they're knocked down, right? Uh, the person who's knocked down may want to do like a wake up super or a wake up DP, right? And mm -hmm. when they do that, if you time your jump poorly and you jump in with an attack, you'll get hit, right? Right. But the thing is, is that when when it, when someone does a wake up DP, uh, dragon punches reversals do not usually hit on the first frame, right? So you'll be invincible mm -hmm. from the first frame, but you may not hit until frame five or six or even later, right? So there's mm. five frames where the character is invincible, right? Where the, the defender is invincible. 
and they don't have a, a, a hitbox out yet, so they can't hit you. And basically what you're doing with a safe jump is you're mm. finding a timing where if you jump in on them and you stick a button out uh, and they dragon punch, well, you, you want the timing so that if, if they don't dragon punch, your button will hit them, right? Maybe they block right. it, maybe they, maybe they get hit by it, whatever. You can go into whatever you want, right? But mm -hmm. in a safe jump setup, if they do a dragon punch, what happens is your button will whiff because uh, they're in their five frames of invincibility, right? Before before the hit comes out, and you land oh. before their hitbox <laughs> becomes active, so you can block it. That's why it's called a safe jump, because you, you oh time the jump okay. so that they can't wake up DP it. If they wake up DP it, you will just safely okay. land. Their dragon punch will whiff, or you'll block it, and then you can punish them on the way down. Okay. And it, so it's it's basically an option select, right? Oh. Um, right, yeah, that it's it's ensuring that you can get the attack out, but you still have enough time to block. Exactly, um, and it's taking advantage of that of that gap between when the the wake up uh, is like when it starts and when it, when the hit is actually active. So like mm -hmm. Jacko, for example, I think her dragon punch, her invincible reversal, doesn't hit until like frame nine or something. So you can save, safe, mm. safe jump that pretty easily, right? Um, because that's, that's a pretty big window of time. You don't have to be super meticulous with your timing window to get it. Um, but I, with something like, I think Souls has the fastest DP in the game. It, it, I want to say it hits on like four or something. So it's significant. Like okay. even other safe jump setups that work on other characters won't work on Soul. I see. Um, so real quick, I'm going to remake the lobby in training mode so we can uh, just jam rounds out without okay. having to go through the round start and finish and all that. Okay. We'll get you another invite. And in chat, Ryok is asking, DPs are slowish in Exert, right? I wouldn't describe them as slow. I think I feel like most modern fighting games these days usually have them hitting between four to six frames. Um, okay, so in terms of Elfelt as a character, how she works and what she's supposed to do, uh, she has a lot of very powerful tools. So it's actually pretty. It, it, you can kind of get lost in the sauce because it seems like everything is good, and that's because everything is good. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, that's fun to know. Yeah. So, in general, I guess to, to break it down, the thing that Elfelt is not good at is defense, right? And by right. not good, I just mean that she's got pretty standard Guilty Gear defensive tools, right? Um, right. She's got, it's like anti-air, Yeah. pop the champagne, right? Yeah. So this can, it's a little bit tricky to get used to for an anti-air because it's dependent on you being close, right? Right. Um, so her, this using this as an anti-air is, it's, it's one of the sharpest parts of her learning curve, right? Because you'll see them jump in and you'll be like, ah, I got it, and then Far S comes out. And actually Far S isn't bad for certain ranges, but at the range that you want to use close S, Far, far S is not great, <laughs> right? And it's mm -hmm. it's pretty fast, so you you have yeah. some time to let it rock, but uh, there's no invulnerability on it, right? Right. So it usually works if they're like pretty close and they're like right above you, usually. Um, which means that so like Guilty Gear characters, their their base set of like defensive tools is like you got FD, you got instant block, you have blitz, right. you have one frame throws if people are getting too aggressive with their. Uh, with their Oki, uh, and then you have air throws, right? And air throws are like very situational, but they're a really good anti-air option. So the thing about Elfelt right. is that on defense, she'll mostly just test your ability to, to, to use like the global systems that every character has access to, because she doesn't have great mm. defensive tools on her own, okay? Now, neutral and offense <laughs> is a different okay. story. Uh, her kit is basically, uh, gives you a lot of room to work with, right? So to start with, uh, depending on the matchups, you'll have easy, you'll have more luck with this in some matchups than others. 
but just pulling Pineberry and chucking that motherfucker is a pretty good idea. <laughs> Eventually what you'll find is that some characters will like see you pull Pineberry and they'll run in on you, right? Or other characters will, will see you pulling Pineberry and then they'll run up in far S, right? Mm -hmm. um, so depending on the matchup, you might have a harder or easier time just pulling Pineberry. But like, I played I played some Elfelt in a in a net play tournament last week actually, and one of them just did round start pull Pineberry and throw it each time. <laughs> right? And the, the How reason did that is, work out? <laughs> well, I mean, I I, I caught on, but it, it was like I played him like three rounds in, deep into winners or something. It was like two or three rounds. So so clearly it worked out fine against a bunch of other people. Right, <laughs> and and the thing is, is gotcha. that having having Pineberry out is just almost always a good idea at first. The other player has to do more work to punish you for throwing Pineberry yeah. um, than you do to just pull it out, right? Mm -hmm. um, so eventually, you'll you'll uh, find people who can who will punish you for just you know throwing it out mindlessly. But until you get there. Just fucking throw it out mindlessly. Why the fuck not? <laughs> so? Yeah. So, what Pineberry does is it, 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 it makes it harder for them to move, right? If I throw overhand like that, you your options, to, if you want to respond to it, are run at me or back right. off, right? Yeah. Now, it so happens oh, that yeah, Elfelt's right. tools for stuffing you if you run in on me are pretty good, right? Right, Far yeah. S is good, 5H is good, this will catch people sometimes. Um, so at a, at a very basic level, you can just throw Pineberry and then see what happens, right? You got hit by it? Great, now it's my turn. You had to block it? Great, I can right. run in after it. Mm -hmm. And then once, once she gets you to block, it doesn't even have to hit, right? If, if she throws Pineberry and just runs in after it, yeah, she's exactly where she wants to be, right? Like, her 5k is really good. It's active for a very long time and it hits low. So it forces <laughs> people to start blocking it, right? So you can do Pineberry, throw it. Oop. Boom, run in. Okay, blocking low, cool, whatever. I'm in your face, maybe I'll pull another Pineberry. Yeah, I can see that it never seems to end unless you do something yeah. to stop it. If you want to stop Elfel, you have to uh, you have to be able to call out for Pineberry at some point. And if they're not doing it, like if you if, if you can just get away with doing random stuff in the Pineberry, you can stay in their face. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Aaron in chat is pointing out that there's another useful thing to do, and it's to figure out to learn how your guns interact with Pineberry. Mm -hmm. um, because like, if you sh if you do it right, like I fucked up there. If you do it right, oh, now I got stuff. <laughs> there we go. You can blow it up, right? Right. Okay. And and that can also be used to cover extra space, right? It means that if you chuck the pine berry and they jump, you don't actually have to follow them. You could just shoot it, and uh, then you get a good okay. knockdown. And then it's just that's more space that's controlled. Exactly. A bit. Yeah. That's green. So, at first, you basically just uh, get see when you can get away with throwing Pineberry, and then run in and do combos. And if they block, you, you get you just throw another, you, you cancel into whatever and throw another Pineberry, right? And in general, especially if you start getting some good Elfel combos, the damage will generally work out in your favor, right? Mm -hmm. If they start contesting you, uh, if they're challenging your Pineberry. They can just run up and block, right? Mm, I they still have to respect that hitbox. Right, and if they start blocking too that, much, because right. they start respecting you too much, then you just throw. Mm, right? Mm -hmm. So okay. Pineberry is basically like having a boot on their neck. Not, it's not dissimilar to some of the stuff with Kai, I yeah. remember you teaching me. Yeah. Like, not totally dissimilar. No, you're, it's, it's, you're very, it's similar like, to how you use, like, the big charge stun edge stuff. Right? Yeah, it's like, just run up and get exactly. him to be It's the same here. idea, it's just that Primeberry is obnoxious as hell because <laughs> it travels in both, like, vertical and horizontal space, right? So it covers an arc 
Basically, yeah. anything in a fighting game that covers an arc is incredibly powerful, right? Because your movement options are usually not nearly right, as nuanced yeah. to, to deal with it. So as a starting point, if you just got comfortable with like her basic combos um, and how you can get into those combos from Pineberry, like you'll be pretty good. That you'll have the tools to do damage. Um, you'll have like pretty scary pressure. Um, and there's a lot, like a lot of the high end of Elfelt's learning curve is learning how to convert off of like random hits. Um, like, you know, Pineberry exploded right here and I have exactly right. the combo for it that pushes you in the corner, right? But fundamentally, getting Pineberry out and just taking advantage of that knockdown to get him and getting him in the corner, get, like uh, doing damage is like a pretty good first step, right? This, this is why people hate her. Well, this part of the reason why people hate her. And the other reason is because of... Oh, fuck it up. Wait, is is shotgun back forward to reload or is it forward back? It's back forward, right? It's back forward, right? Okay. I think. <laughs> so, like, the thing with shotgun is, and it's especially powerful once you get him in the corner, right? Um, shotgun has, like, a fast attack, right? Actually, two fast attacks, because this is pretty fast, too. If I stand here and charge it up, it's plus on block. She's got an attack. Oop. Uh, she's got an attack out of shotgun that moves her forward, right? And then she's got, uh, let's see, what is it? Dust is the unblock board thing? Dust or H? I don't remember. Uh, yeah. There that, you go. The command throw. Yeah. 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 So if you do it to me and I'm in the corner, Basically, you can keep shooting me, right? Just just keep on doing the like regular shot. Yeah, so the charge oh, yeah, shot is like, plus. Yeah. You get to do whatever you want afterwards. You can you can keep on just doing that, um, and it's pretty scary, right? I have to mash a fast button um, to contest. I often have to instant block it to be able to con to to like punish it safely. And if you chose something besides the fast shot, I'm I might be fucked, right? Mm -hmm. So, what Shotgun basically does is it lets you force a situation where they have to think a lot harder and a lot more quickly than you do. Whoa, that is a lot of chip. Yeah. Sorry. No. Get used to it. <laughs> and so, and the, so the thing is, the thing about Shotgun is one in most unless they unless the Elf Felt player fucks up. Uh, I can't burst out of it, right? Like if, if you hit me with a shotgun, a corner shotgun loop or whatever. Oh uh, um, yeah. I can't burst uh -huh. out of it. It's burst safe, right? The other thing is, uh, you're basically forcing these like very quick either reaction or guessing situations, and the only thing that makes this situation stop is either a I successfully defend or b you push yourself out, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you're attacking people in the shotgun stance, your goal is basically. Once you, like, is, is, is to, to balance your attacks to keep me blocking with either rolling forward or her S to, or just running in to, to close the distance and start the situation again. Mm -hmm. And so that can pair really nicely with all her mid-screen stuff using Pineberry and using her buttons to, like, get you in the corner. Because once she gets you here, she can park Pineberry on you, and then she can just start shooting you. And like, there are some situations where like she, she, you know, she's minus, and you can mash out, right? But it's real hard to tell. Yeah, she is. And so, as, as like a basic elf felt game plan. You could basically just spend most of your time in neutral, either looking for opportunities to like uh, pull Pineberry and get it out, and then just just start at, uh, going in for pressure there to try and push them into the corner. And then once you get them in the corner, park another Pineberry on them, and then go for shotgun pressure. Mm -hmm. And honestly, like you don't need to think too hard about it. Eventually you will, <laughs> but but just going in and like. 
shooting a whole bunch of shotgun shots is pretty good. Hmm, okay. You do need to be careful with her standing heavy, the 5H. Um, it, is a, it is a weird attack in this game because it is... Uh, it will programmatically uh, uh, whiff on anything that's crouching. Okay. And yes, like, I think I remember that as. And, and it's, a guide it's weird. Like, like, Johnny has a crouching attack where he actually hops up off the ground a little bit. Five mm. five H will whiff on that. Oh weird. Yeah. So you need to be careful with that. You can always cancel it into. I think can you cancel it in the finder. Let's see. I think you can cancel the first shot in this stuff. Yeah. So you can kind of use it as a poke if you're willing to cancel into something else. And that I see. Works on hit. There's this like. But yeah, go go ahead and just like rush my ass down in the corner for a little bit. Get comfortable with their tools. Yeah. There you go. Oh, so if you, cause you're trying to do run up throw a lot, right? Um, um, I'm trying to do it, but I'm also having, for whatever reason, I'm I'm having psychological problems remembering that Pineberry is a quarter circle forward. Sure. Yeah. And then it's it's back to throw it. That messes me up so bad. So, I, it it got me, it it got me a lot at first until I realized, like. The way you can think of it, right, is you do core circle forward, and she kind of pulls it out, right? She she mm -hmm. drops back to throw the overhand, and the down throw she like scoops it like it's because it's an underhand, right? Mm -hmm. I it feels silly, but that actually does help me remember uh, what the motions are, right? I don't know. I throw. No, that actually does help. Yeah, I play fetch with Kinako a lot. She chases a ball, and either I'm, I most of the time I'm dropping back to like throw it super far because she likes running super fast, right? Um, so it actually did help me remember it. <laughs> but yeah, so often what you'll see people do is. Uh, they get him in the corner. If they don't already have a Pineberry out, um, drop Pineberry on top of them. If you don't have time for that, uh, you can run up and like go like 5K, close S, uh, depending on, you know, assuming they blocked. Uh, if, if, you, if they're crouching, then you go for, was it 2H in a 2D and then pull Pineberry and then run in. Mm. And it's, it's not guaranteed, but they have to swing on you. It's basically a hard read. Oh yeah, I thought there you just did the thing mm -hmm. where you forced me, like I pressed the button and you just blocked and then the pineberry blew me up. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's like a boot on your neck, right? As if 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 you have a pineberry on top of me, uh, it is bad for me to block because I have to hold whatever you do next, including maybe just get thrown mm -hmm. or eat a high low or whatever. And if I swing on you, and you block, I'll get hit by the pineberry. It's actually, it's, it's somewhat similar to, like, uh, Dr. Doom's Hidden Missiles Assist. It has a similar kind of just nullifying effect, where uh, unless I am very, very smart or time my attack impeccably, it's just your turn for almost, for, like, the, that entire duration that Pineberry is out. And yeah, so you can kind of think of the game plan as mid-screen. You're just looking, at, you're, you know, you're just looking for an opportunity to chuck a pineberry and follow it up. Once you mm -hmm. get the hit, you want to push them into the corner, get whatever damage you can, and then when they're in the corner and you can you can kind of do it safely, then you go into shotgun stance. Mm -hmm. And and the thing about shotgun stance is basically, and this this is true for like this is true for fighting games in general, right? Like attacks have a certain amount of push, right? And the push is applied mm -hmm. usually to both characters. So there's a little bit of pushback on block, and there's a little bit of pushback on the character, on the character right. who's attacking, right? In the corner, the pushback on block isn't helping me at all. 
right? You're getting right. pushed back a little, but it's less than you would be if we were mid-screen. So if you try and do the shotgun stuff mid-screen, what you'll find is that you get pushed back further much quicker, yeah. right? Oh, wow, yeah. Yeah, it's not as useful because I can backdash to get out of range. Now I'm fine, right? <laughs> yeah. So shotgun really shines as a tool in the corner because this is where the pushback is nullified a little bit. Right. So we're mid screen, chugging that pine berry. Oh, get you in the corner. Oh, and that gets swung on. And you're about to blow up. Ah. Uh, I could really see in that mode, it's like. That's the thing where I, I, I can like sense what should be happening. Because mm -hmm. I was like, oh, you like. You underhanded it. I. Like, in one instant, you underhanded it and then. And then like, yep. Totally calling in my, calling out my jump in, and I completely ate garbage for that. Woo. Oh. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you threw me. I didn't see that. <laughs> I was surprised too, actually. <laughs> oh my god, yeah. I can totally see how... It's so crazy how that can... You can see why you hate it, because it definitely just stops stuff. Like, you can't jump in, because that's happening. Whoa! Okay. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> Thank you for, for waiting for my turn. Uh, Look, Elfelt is that scary in the corner, okay? Woo! I feel like I am... I know that some of them are kind of random, but I am trying to get you that, uh, that anti-air close flash. Mm -hmm. It takes some work. But it's working, yeah, sometimes. Oh. Oh. <laughs> so, some of my favorite shit see, that I see good Elfelt players do is like the off the backboard confirms where they overhand yeah. it like when when you're in the corner, right? And it bounces off and hits you. Oh god, it's fucked up. It's Ooh. so crazy when that happens. Oh. I can see there's a real sort of like recognize recognize your hit confirm and then doing it into bridal express mm -hmm. if it hit for the knockdown and like just pulling out the pine berry if it was lost. yeah it's ve like very basic stuff right Elfeld's <clears throat> basic power like if you can just combo into something that knocks down and throw pine berry you're you're playing very like it's it's the equivalent of like you know soul like day one stuff right you get the gun flame out you get a knockdown that lets you get gun flame out then you run behind the gun flame and it lets you get another knockdown like Elfelt gets to do that that basic gear stuff very well and she has easy access to overhead right mm. she's got yeah, good she's got, that. she's got she's got really good damage uh -huh. overall and then she has this shit. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is this is what you're doing to people, AV. This is <laughs> this is who you want to be. <laughs> Maybe I should be high. Although she feels kinda of fun. Um No she it, like, Elfelt is super fun. I so I had I like, like I had a couple weeks where I was playing Elfelt. And instantly I was like, I immediately understand why everyone likes her and also why everyone hates her. And I can't, as, as an advocate for this game, I cannot in good conscience play her myself. <laughs> it still makes people not want to play. Exactly. 
I like she <laughs> she legit was why. what got me to stop playing when Sign first came out. Like, I played against some of my friends, like pretty basic Elfelts, right? It was uh, uh, Sanchez, Alex Sanchez, aka Mecha MacGyver, and Nerd Josh were both messing around with Elfelt, Elfelt, and with both of them. I just got murdered so hard that I was like, oh yeah, I forgot. Guilty Gear sucks when you're bad at it. Like, <laughs> I was like, I don't want to deal with this. And then I went back to like, our, I don't know, fucking like Marvel 3 or something. Like Elfelt made Marvel 3 look more palatable. <laughs> That's, uh, I'm like, look, rough. in this game, I play Zero. I can do that to other people. Fuck this. Oh, uh, she hit Chase down. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. Hey. <laughs> oh no! Whew. Um. Oh my gosh. Oh, wow! I can't believe that hit me. Ugh, okay. Okay, so when I'm in the corner, because this is, uh, this is a major problem I have in general with Guilty Gear, mm -hmm. what should I start as a total beginner who's getting always rocked yeah. um, real hard? Mm -hmm. When I am in the corner, what, Just like that. What should I start really doing so that I can like start playing this game more? Sure. So the 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 basic the basic rule to keep in mind when you're in the corner is almost everyone does more damage when they're in the corner. Almost everyone has like <laughs> combos that that just with extra corner extensions or shit that they can only get in the corner you may not even have to spend meter on it right like right chip mid-screen normally has to choose between good damage and a knockdown but in the corner he can get both and that's true for most characters right. so uh whenever you're in the corner you're gonna ha like the risk for you in attacking is is higher for two reasons one is your position is much uh, more restrained than your opponents, right? Right. So if you figure like every half second to a second, we're making decisions, right? About what we want to do based on what we're seeing on screen. The, the, the person who is in the corner, their range of position is more limited. So the attacker has a much easier time decide, uh, of basically picking buttons that'll work, right? Or picking attack options right. that they know will hit. So... Uh, you are less likely to uh, be able to avoid attacks. And if you swing on someone, if you're like, if you're trying to attack when you're in the corner, uh, it's almost certainly not going to work, right? If you're smart right. about it and you're really, you know, you, you know exactly what you're looking for, then it's a different story. But in general, attacking when you're in the corner is not a good idea. Your job is to get out of the corner, right? Right. And you do that. Uh, there's a couple different ways. So one, if I run in, let's say, go ahead and just block down back, right? Yeah. Actually, uh, block block standing. That'll make this easier. Okay. So I'm, uh, 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 right? Now I'm out here. So mm -hmm. as basically, I went I went for a combo. It didn't work. Now I'm pushed out here. Now you have a little room to work, right? But if you then think, oh, now it's my turn to attack, nah. Because you're still okay. in the corner, and I still have the advantage, right? Yeah. So instead, what you want to be thinking is, like, if I'm pushed out and then I, the first thing that I do is run back in because I want to I want to do it again, right? So go ahead and stand block again. Mm -hmm. oh, uh, uh, uh. You're still in the corner, so I'm going to do this again, right? If that's the idea, right. if that's what you think I'm going to do, uh, then you just jump out, right? Oh, okay. So block. And then once my turn's over, you can jump out, right? And oh, shit, now I'm in the corner. And it might be that what you have to do is jump and then air dash out, right? Because mm -hmm. that'll give you a little bit more space. Woo! Now you're in the corner. Yeah. Okay. Um, that's the that's the most basic thing. However, 
in Guilty Gear, you can get hit out of jump startup. So when you tap up, it takes about three frames, I think two or three frames, before oh, you leave okay. the ground, right? So if you're just trying to jump all the time and I'm, I'm very close to you, right? There's a chance that I might hit you. And if I'm, yeah, so if I start okay. staggering my strings, or if I leave gaps that I, that I think that you can, that you might want to jump out in because you're holding out back, oh, I then see. you'll get hit, right? So, so now what you do is uh, you got to block until I'm pretty far, right? Right, because you're still really close. Yeah, and that's the thing about Elfel is that her moves make it pretty easy for her to stay in your face, right? Right. But here... Because you just talk... Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I could have totally jumped. I didn't yeah. have to. Yeah. So you, you have to learn the pressure strings to figure out when you can jump without getting hit. Definitely couldn't jump there. Yeah. But... And in general, the rule is the further pushed out I am, uh, mm -hmm. the easier it is for you to jump out because the gaps between my attacks become larger, right? If I'm going here, here, uh -huh. here, that's not really yeah. much of a gap, right? But the, as my attacks get bigger and bigger, as I go from punch to kick to slash to hard slash to dust, uh, right. The the attacks will generally be slower, and so you have more time to uh, to jump out. Right. Mm -hmm. The second thing you need to remember so, is that in Guilty Gear, if you jump and oh my god, what is? <laughs> oh, that's her taunt, I think. <laughs> Cute. <laughs> so... <laughs> I. See, it's really cute. Yeah. Um, all right, keep on teaching me about defense. Though. So the thing I was going to say was, in Guilty Gear, if you get if you try and air block a grounded attack, you will get hit unless you faultless defense. Oh right, 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 right. So what you want to do is you want to you want to jump and you want to hold up back when you jump so that you'll uh -huh. you'll block you'll be blocking just in case. But you gotta you gotta do it with faultless defense. And since both of us just lost oh. all our meter, we can't do it. If you like run at me real quick, oh, just, yeah. just hold run, yeah. Wee. Yeah. So now, when we're out here and you're looking for your turn, what you want to do when you think I'm pushed out pretty far is hold up back and two button. Yep. And then as soon as you're at height, right? As soon as you're at jump height, you air dash out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so you only have to, you only want to faultless after you've left the ground. Okay. Yeah, we're both out of meters, so you can't do it now, right? So that's that's like the basic corner treatment, right? If you can just block, block, block until you have room to FD jump and then dash out, you're in pretty good shape. Now, what people doing when they start when they start seeing you do that is they'll start standing here and anti airing you or going for an air throw or whatever. Right? Oh, I see. From that position yeah. over there. Right? Yeah. So, so you're you're here. You go ahead and jump out. I'm gonna air throw you. I put you back in the corner. Now we have to play gotcha. the game again, right? Right. But okay. In most cases, you're gonna take less damage losing because you try to air dash out than you would have if you had tried to swing on me and get counter hit into a combo. Right. Because you have to use like. You're gonna just do air throw damage to me and not like a full corner combo. On yeah, me. exactly. Now, I mean, with Elfelt, like if you air dash out and I catch you with like a perfectly spaced, you know, close S. Yeah. I'm, I'm probably gonna get good damage, right? But even in that case, you ate a combo's worth of damage, but you weren't back in the corner, right? Yeah, that's true. And um, if people are catching you with that, right? So let's say, let's say we're, I'm out here and you go ahead and just hit me with some block string. <laughs> Okay, I'm out, right? But if I wasn't able to get out, and uh, you you picked off my my air dash out with a throw or with a with an anti air, mm -hmm. what that tells me is, oh, you're you're respecting my jump out, right? Let's say I do this uh, once. The next time I'm in the corner, right? If I know that you're gonna catch me, uh, then you're not gonna be. If if I know you're looking for me to jump out, then you're not gonna run back in at me, right? Because if you run in at me, then I can then I can air dash out. So if I know that you're not going to run in on me, okay. that's when I start to get when I get to press buttons, right? Because you're at that range and I can I can I can contest. Oh, I see. Yeah. Well, actually, this is not how I do it because I'm Chip and I have three jumps <laughs> and a wall uh, a wall cling, so I can just jump out and then 
like head right over you and I'm fine. But for characters but who are not gifted with wanna... ninja mobility, that this is the game you have to play. So you, okay, so you, first thing is you try and yeah. FD jump out. Yeah. If they're anti-airing you, then so Wait. if if I want if I want to stop you from FD jumping, yeah. I have to be like up here, right? Right. If I want to anti-air okay, you, gotcha. I, I have to be out here. Oh, okay. Gotcha. If I'm standing here, then you can start pressing buttons again. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because now I'm now we're playing. Yeah. Even though I'm in the corner, we're still we're still playing the game again. Exactly. Essentially. Yeah. And you know, and and like if they're looking for you to FD jump, then you can run up in far S. Right, and now it's your turn. You get to do shit. That's like the basic game. Obviously, every character plays this a little bit different, depending on how their attacks will interact with yours. Um, but in general, that's kind of the the way corner works. Mm, okay. Cool. So that's basically, so the, those are your basic options. And then like people with reversals get to do those, but also it just has a reversal super and that's it, right? Yeah. So you can use Blitz as your reversal. Oh yeah, that's right. It is active frame one. Um, if you tap it, you have eight frames to like reject something. If you hold it, you have a lot longer, but then you have to follow up with the, the Blitz attack. Um, oh, okay. And that's that's basically it is it's a good reversal option. It takes a little getting used to. So at first you mostly want to focus on using like your meter defensively for faultless defense or dead angle. That's the the guard cancel, alpha counter, v, v reversal, whatever you want to call it. Oh right, right, right. What's um, the command for that again? Actually, uh, I think it's forward, and I want to say uh, so. You need half your meter to just right. run at me real quick. I think it's forward in either two attacks or three attacks. So if you block real quick, there you go. Okay, gotcha. Yeah. Oh, and it's just forward. You don't have to do like that. Yeah, you don't have to do a motion. I think you ha you have to do a motion for Eunice, I believe. Yeah. I think it's it might be like back to down or something. It's it's I, it's like the old alpha counter input, I think. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. In any case. Um, I'm going to go ahead and open up the lobby so everyone else can play in. You're welcome to stay in here and play with whoever you like. Yeah. Um, I'm super excited to see how your elf elf does. We, we can keep playing, obviously, or you can pair up with someone who's... Uh, we'll see if we have any elf elf players or people who are, are uh, closer to your skill level. Um, but I hope that was useful. You're also welcome to stay on the call, yeah. but no pressure. Um, no, I love no, shooting no. the shit was... with you, so whatever. That was super useful. I'm going to open up the stream... Cool. On another device so that I can see what people in the chat are saying. Yeah. Thanks, good. thanks for all the tips. I want to try and do a show up here weekly at least because I did promise you. <laughs> Does so? How is? Do you have any idea how the like the uh, Northwest FGC is doing right now? Um, I don't actually know a lot about the local scene. I know a bunch of people in it, but yeah. I don't. I haven't. Um, I haven't actually, uh, interacted with them much. Sure. I know, like, I know Tasha, mm -hmm. who you probably know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, she would probably, she would probably under, know, know what was going on. Yeah. Um. Yeah, so Graffiti Bandit in chat, uh, first off, what's up, homie? Second of off, um, if you have any idea what's going on with the Northwest Air Dasher crew, it would be dope to know, uh, a lot of regions, or I won't say a lot, some regions have started doing net play locals because uh, all our shit is shut down right now. Yeah, for real. Um, and so that would be a pretty easy way for you to just hop in. Yeah, that would be really nice, actually, if anyone has any links for someone who's like... I think I think there's a there's a Discord for the Pack Northwest Air Dashers, right? Graffiti? Oh, yeah. Somebody may have linked that to me once, and I was too busy to follow up with yep. it. But I would love to, maybe I'll, I'll, I'll actually try it this time. Hell yeah. All right. 
Oop. Got fucking work DMs right now. Give me one second. <laughs> oh dear. I broke the build. It's not my fault. I'm sorry. <laughs> was, it, was that your? What was that? That was that was every time you open up Twitch, it just starts playing whatever's oh. on the front page. Got it. I, I was hoping you just had some like wild ass ringtone from like the you know mid aughts or something. Oh man, that would have been tight. You're like, oh um, yeah, it's some, it's some no fucking crunk shit that I was that I got you know <laughs> in 2005 on my razor. <laughs> All right, so the lobby's back up. It should be called WC Play GG if you want to come and play some games. There we go. How are you finding Grand Blue, by the way? Um, I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> I know it's not your jam, but I'm having. I, I'm actually having a pretty good time. Yeah, I think saying it's not my jam is an understatement, but uh, <laughs> I do think I tend to think of this stuff as kind of like spice levels. Where like, yeah. Once once your brain is used to this level of stimulation, and I'm a fucking chip player, right? Like he is, he's probably the second the second or third fastest character in fighting games. Uh, once you get used to this level of heat, it's very hard to go back to like, I don't know, like when when white people order medium at at, at a Thai restaurant, <laughs> you know? No, for sure. For sure. I actually kind of like was thinking about this the other day and how like even as someone who's I would call primarily a spectator, mm -hmm. um, I'm like, I really love Guilty Gear. Like yeah. even if I could ne like even if I never played it even at a semi competent level, mm -hmm. I can still understand it enough that I can watch it. Yeah. And be just like amazed and have an am amazing time, like, just purely as a spectator. Yeah. Um, so I want games like it to exist. Um, and I, I would say, like, I think the spice level analogy is actually really good, because it's like, if the only games that exist are, like, the spiciest level, then... Then no one's getting into like, it. Right. Ooh. So, like... You need to work your way up there. This is why I always say that Guilty Gear is a great, like, right. third fighting game for people. No, totally. Whereas, like, Grand Blue is helping me, like, get a lot of the, the, the very basics that are kind of, like, such muscle memory that, like, nobody, nobody even, like, says, like, oh, this is what a safe jump is. Yeah. These are all felt safe jumps when you're, like, looking at a guide. Mm -hmm. And when you're like, what fundamentally should I be, like, looking for or trying to do with it? Um, like, even beginner guides, I think, sometimes have that problem. But Oh, yeah, because beginner guides are not written by beginners. They're no. written by, by people who already know how to play fighting games. And usually, this like, is a... this is the case for a lot of instructional resources where it's they're, they're created for people who already know how to play fighting games. It's, a, it's like a getting started as quick as possible guide, not a here's how you actually learn the fundamentals. Woo. Totally. I've thought about this a lot because I, I do work in education professionally. Yeah. Um, and I've like, I've taught rhetoric and composition before. So like the question of like, oh, how do you actually like teach someone mm -hmm. is like, it's totally different. Yes. And like that's what you have to actually do, like because this this stuff is as hard as like learning something and like 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 learning a language or something. You mm -hmm. need to you kind of if you're t really teaching it, then there's like this advanced level of like teaching theory that goes along with that. Yeah, one of one of the things that I find that is super hard for for new people who are like otherwise like educated and intelligent and generally think of themselves as people who are good at learning um, mm -hmm. is there is a limit to how much you can reason how much information and how much uh like useful knowledge you can assimilate in any given day and in fighting yeah. games it's usually like 10 or 15 minutes 
like tops, <laughs> right? Which I'm I'm used to because coming from martial arts, you don't want to teach someone more than like one or two things in a day because they're only going to be able to absorb so much. And even if you teach it to them, then they probably won't be able to make use oh, yeah. of it for the first week, right? And then it, you have to actually do it too, yeah. especially with like martial arts. Yeah, like you have to sit there and drill it and get your form actually like correct. Yeah, but in when it comes to video games. People usually think, wait a minute, I'm a nerd, I, I'm, I'm smart, I'm good yeah. at learning video games, so I should be good at learning this, right? And it's absolutely not the case. No, totally. I think it's like, it's so much like, yeah, because it's like, you can, with Dark Souls, I always like, I've been playing so much Dark Souls with my, with my friend lately, <laughs> so I've really become a, a a games critic cliche at this yep. point um but like that's a game that feels really like that's i think that's the iconic example the game that feels hard and is absolutely not mm -hmm. like is completely about like memorization and system mastery yeah and like just your understand like you can learn anything you absorb about that game makes you immediately better at it. yeah like there's no gap yeah, it has it has rules that it's it's internally consistent with, and so as you learn the rules, you feel better and better, right? Right, exactly. Like there's parrying. There are a couple of things that are like, okay, I have to learn the timing on this. But in, in Dark Souls, you can just like learn certain locations and certain like enemy patterns and use that, or and like or just learn a rule about how to exploit enemy AI. Yeah. Um, and. And you can use that tool in really fun and creative and interesting ways. But you don't have to like practice a ton just to use that right. one basic. Tool. Because learning the rule is enough. Right, just like that's exactly like exactly what you're saying. Just knowing the thing is usually enough in games and yeah. in fighting games it's not. No. It is I have the hardest time uh, talking to game designers who want to like fighting games and don't for this exact reason right yeah because game designers more than anyone else are accustomed to being rewarded for just knowing the thing and i have to tell them mm -hmm. if you knew the thing yeah. but you couldn't do the thing then you don't know the thing yeah and it's like i think that's like why i'm i'm a really good spectator i'm really good at watching fighting games mm -hmm. but i'm definitely that 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 knowledge doesn't translate really very much at all no. to actually playing them and it's also why I find game designers like fighting games. I won't even just say game designers. I'll say like like general game enthusiasts, right? The the core gamers, if you want to call them that. They like fighting games, which are are happen at a pace that they feel like they can understand. Which is why I think Street Fighter gets a lot of love. Yeah. Um, it was so when I when I took Irene to her first Evo. Like, she watched Street Fighter and she's like, yeah, this is cool, I've seen it before, what, you know, whatever. Um, she saw Marvel and she saw how hype people got around Marvel and all its craziness. And she was like, oh, yeah. this is fighting games. I get it now, right? I understand why people go out of their way for this shit so hard. And it's so hard to impart yeah. that onto, onto like, the, the person who thinks that they're good at games and that they're smart or whatever, um, because Marvel is so far from their comprehensibility that they can't yeah. imagine themselves having fun with it. And the the thing that's interesting, like that's so funny. I think that you're you're totally right that there's this way in which, um, like a spectator who's not like super invested in game design can look at it and just be like, that looks cool. The things yeah. that are happening, like you can like parse that it's exciting and interesting. Whereas the game designer person is like, I'm thinking about all of like the systems and stuff that goes into it. And now I'm completely overwhelmed. Exactly. And <laughs> I want the ball of Street Fighter. I mean, I think you'll be pleased. I, I actually want to say, I think that you'll be pleased to know that my frustrations with Grand Blue, I think, would all make you very happy. Oh, absolutely. Uh, <laughs> like, I mean, the things that I'm not liking about the game are, and the things that I'm missing about it from Eunice are all, all of your prophecies coming true. 
I'm like, oh man, I wish that I had like, I wish that I had more tools. I wish that I could enforce mix. Like, I wish I could do reverse beat so bad. I wish I could do like super annoying frame traps mid screen. Ah. You are, um, you are just buttering me up now, Evie, but I appreciate it. <laughs> no, I was, like, legit, like, because, like, I hear you say that stuff and I believe you. Yeah. But I didn't really, like, actually experience it. You didn't think that you would feel it. Until, until, like, I was, like, trying to, until I was playing, like, Catalina as coming from Borea, mm -hmm. I was, like, oh, my God, I feel like I just, like, like, I have, my legs are cut off. Yep. Like, yeah, it's I look at I look at Vasaraga and I'm like, you have a big ass scythe. Why are you swinging it into the background of the stage instead of forward? <laughs> like, you need Vasaraga belongs in a game where that button can rock, you know? Yeah. Put Vasaraga yeah. in uni. Catalina? Yeah. We got some lovely friends in Guilty Deer that we'd love you to play with. <laughs> Yeah, like, having that, like, that's actually, in fact, the reason why I'm playing, I, like, I'm playing Narmaya. Okay. Who is... She's, like, the hard one. Right. She's, and she's also objectively worse. Yeah. Um, she, like, maybe not, like, quite objectively, but she's definitely quite a bit weaker than Graham and Catalina. Yeah, yeah, she has to work harder to work for the results. Way harder to be weaker, but I am having so much more fun with her than I yeah. am with I when I started playing Catalina I was like, uh maybe I don't actually love just throwing out standing B <laughs> as much as I thought I did. Yeah. It's like maybe there's more you, to you life feel you feel good and smart and then you're like, but but I kinda wanna feel myself and I can't feel myself if all I'm doing is walking back and forth and pressing a button. Right. And I can do that, like, that's what I was like, that's why I picked Orie, because I, I could do that. Yeah. But, like, Orie has so many other shit yeah. that she can do. Yeah. She has, like, her her special move, like, pokes that, like, I loved tripping people up because she could go into this, like, this low that you couldn't counter poke mm -hmm. um, at the end of a block string. Yeah. Um, whenever she wanted. Well, I'm I'm happy to have contributed in ruining you a little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, quit. You did successfully make me like start being like actually, um, actually, um. But yeah, no. So Narmaya is like, but Narmaya does have like a lot of a lot of um, tools, mm -hmm. and. There, some of them are interesting to use, a lot of them are weak, but she has interesting corner combos that feel like, again, kind of like, I'm like, oh, I guess I can do this stuff now. Yeah. Like, I, I did much more complicated stuff just trying to do a basic combo with Orie. Feels nice, um, right? Let's say that again. Feels nice, right? Like. Yeah, it did. Like, you're playing a completely different game, but you're just a little bit stronger. Yeah, and it's definitely, I, the time that it's taken me to get to a level where I'm like, feeling like I know what I'm doing, but it's also very, very different. Like, I'm, that's the other thing that I'm really appreciating mm -hmm. is like, oh, basic Street Fighter stuff is really, really different. Yeah. And the skills involved actually, um, actually are, like, different enough to be, like, really tripping me up, and I'm having to, like, learn a lot more new Absolutely. skills. Absolutely. Yeah, so, I don't know if you saw, but last weekend, uh, the, the Japan FGC had, uh, like, a tournament that was meant to, the, the, it was, it was basically meant to define who's the strongest fighting game community, right? Oh! And so what they did was, they all played Grambler, because that's the thing that everyone was playing. But, and they broke oh. into three-person teams based on the game that you got started in, right? Oh. And so you had you had Street Fighter 4, you had Street Fighter 5. I saw, like, Pockin. Uh, I think there was uh, Nitro Plus Blasters and, like, Arcana Heart. Wow. Um, That's pretty cool. All kinds of stuff. Who do you think was in the finals? Based on what you know about You're gonna Grand be Blue. guilty? Huh? <laughs> 
Um. Dang. Who would I, I'm like trying to like legit think like who I would actually guess. Yeah. Take some time. Think about it. Like. Because one of the things, like, I would almost say that, like, I would imagine, like, guilty or some crazy shit. Because, like, you are dealing with some, like, ridiculous stuff. But then again, like, it's, like, when you have those tools, it's like, oh, a Guilty Gear block string is, like, really crazy. And, like, defending against that requires a lot of stuff. Yeah. And yet, at the same time, um... There's just so much, like, really precise spacing you have to think about. There's, like, a lot of, like, mind games. Yeah. Like, you had mentioned this before, and a lot of people have talked about how, like, how, like, Street Fighter is a little bit more quote-unquote random mm -hmm. because you're, like, really thinking about hard reads. Yeah. Um, so you need to have those. Man. I feel I, like I'm it very would interested either... to hear your reasoning, so yeah. So I would say it would either be like, I'm going to put it out there for either Third Strike or Guilty Gear. I'm going to do two guesses. <laughs> okay, so uh, first off, uh, I think your, your intuition is generally correct. Um, I was super pleased to see that in a game as fundamentals driven as uh, Grand Blue purports to be, Street Fighter V lost to fucking BB Tag. Oh wow, that's really funny. <laughs> and it was like it was like first round or something. Like they just got pieced out. Oh my god, that's really funny. Uh, grand finals was between one of the two Guilty Gear teams and one of the two Melty Blood teams. <laughs> oh my god, that's so great. Get the fuck out of here with your oh, we got fundamentals bullshit. Guilty Gear makes you better at and every fighting game well, because you have to learn every fighting game just to learn how to play each fucking character. And Melty Blood is basically Guilty Gear with like six times as many characters. Yeah, and everyone so has two air dashes. No, that, that is the thing that I've been... Um, that's the thing that I've been noticing. Yeah. Okay, right, I'm going to try and actually... All right, play, I'm focus. I'm going to not talk. But yeah, you should keep... Cool. You should keep talking. Okay, I will keep talking. So that you're distracted. Woo! <laughs> 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 oh no, I'm in the corner. Oh! Wow, the gold burst to keep me in, I like it. Woo! <laughs> 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 Oh, man. Nice. Good. There you go, yeah. <laughs> if you're if we're full screen, you don't have to run in. Just fucking pull Pineberry. Yeah, you're like as soon as there's like a gap at all. Yeah. I've been trying to do a similar thing with Find Me. Where I'm just like, oh, if you're staying on the screen, you're hesitating for a little bit, fuck it. I'm going invisible. Um, you did a good yeah, job getting out of the corner there. That's a really I kind of like having this like goal of just pulling out Pineberry. Yep. Honestly, it's actually kind of like a neat thing to start with. Oh yeah. Just the concept of like Hey, I'm here's something to do that doesn't involve hitting me, right? Right. It makes it easier to maybe learn. Maybe not gonna happen. <laughs> that's punishable for sure. Good. Hi, <laughs> Jobu. I can kind of already see how, just from like noticing what you were doing to me, mm -hmm. how like I can, I can start like 
cutting down your decision space by yep. by, by chucking pineberry. Yep. Like, oh, it's like, oh, cool. I have. That's the way in which this game does simplify things because you have abusive tools that prevent you from. Yeah. Wait. Oh man. <laughs> Oh, that that is the thing, right? Like, in in a Street Fighter, even in in a uh, in Bram Blue, you look at a character and you're like, oh, I got this button that does this thing. I got this button that does this thing, and they all have their like nuanced interrelationship and you know between like the startup and the hitbox and and you know how how much forward does this movie and blah 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 blah. Guilty Gear's like, yo, you want a projectile that cuts off the top half of the screen? I got you. We'll let you figure out what to do with that, right? Yeah. You want you want no, to summon like another homie who does attacks? Fine, no problem. <laughs> That's like one of the things that I think first actually attracted me to units is like, cause like, what I've noticed is what I tend to like in games is a button that feels really good to press. Yep. Um, wave and good button press feel good. Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I've been enjoying. And in, oh, oh, oh. Um, and in units, you get some really nice buttons. Like everyone gets like these really just juicy, meaty, like cover most of the screen. Yep. I'm curious, what, what buttons do you find the most personally satisfying in any fighting game? Ooh, do you want like, do you want like some of my favorite yeah. buttons that I've pressed in a fighting game? Yeah. Brief history. Um, well, like, Warrior's, um, uh, Command Order A. Okay. Like, so this is the, this is her stand summons and it hits low. Right, right, right. Um, is, like wait, is that like the golf swing? It's not the golf swing. That's the B version. Okay, okay. The, that one is really fun. It's actually a little bit more of an overhead. The golf swing is the um, okay. The EX version, but the A version feels really good because it just like it catches. The thing that was really fun when I was like beating Christine in Paris mm -hmm. in that game was that I could like. Pressure them with Ori's long range pokes, which were all like really fun buttons. Um, and I really like her big, like heavy kick. Yeah. But like that command order A, because it hit low, it was constantly catching people who were like walking away. Yeah. They were like, oh, the, your block string is over, it's safe, I get to back out. And you're that like, nope. Like, no, no, you actually have to still, you have to continue respecting me. Um, and whether I threw that out or not, like, and, like, cr created a lot of, like, made it, like, really intimidating to get close to Aurier. Mm -hmm. Um, and more than Divine Thrust, that button was, I think, like, one of the things that made her such a problem. Yep. What else? I'm trying to think of other good buttons that I've, like, really enjoyed. Have you, have you ever played Ryu, like in Street Fighter at all? Oh, I played a little bit of Ryu, actually. Do you, um, do you have a favorite Ryu attack? You know, okay, I'm trying to like remember like one that I've really... You know, I actually do like his overhead. There's something really satisfying about how it like really goes from up to down. Yep. It's got, um, it's got an arc which makes you think, oh, I do have to block that high, don't I? Right, and I really like it when... Um, Oh, um, sorry. If you want to stop talking and focus, that's yeah. perfectly fine. <laughs> I'll think about my Ryu button, yeah. but I'll also think about my l button. <laughs> what do you mean you don't you don't automatically have a favorite Ryu button to talk about? <laughs> so Woo. Oh god. <laughs> oh. Man, 
One of my favorite Elfelt facts is that her uh, her voice actress in English for the Sign dub, because they did a dub for Sign and then didn't do it for Revelator. Uh, right. It's Cassandra Lee Morris, who also did Morgana in Persona. And I oh, guess, really? yeah, and I, I guess at some point she actually moonlit as a freelance writer for uh, like a bridal magazine. Oh my God, that's so cute. Oh my god. Oh my god. <laughs> At least I blocked it. <laughs> oh no. Ah. <laughs> I don't think I'm fast enough with my like far slashes. Mm -hmm. Should I be like pressing when you charge into me, should I be pressing a faster button than what I'm uh, so the way to think about it is uh, in in Guilty Gear, momentum carries over, right? Everyone's kind of running around on ice skates for the most part. So when you space a button in Street Fighter, which has no momentum conservation, uh, you need to make sure that the button that the other person is going to be within range when you when you're active, right? Uh, mm -hmm. Which means you you either need to lead them a little bit if you think they're going to walk forward, or you're already in range and you're pushing something that's fast enough that they're not going to move out of the way, right? But in Guilty Gear, mm. because you move so fast, uh, you want you want to be make sure that by the time you reach your opponent, you're already in active frames, right? You want your startup on any attack to be safely out uh, of the way. Okay. Um, so in general, it means you're going to be pressing your attacks a little bit earlier, right? And it's going to depend on, like, who's running in and how fast. But in general, you want to time your attacks so that you're not in range until you're already active. And that's the disadvantage okay. to standing still, is that you don't get to yeah. cover you don't get to cover your uh, startup like that. Hmm. Charging at me, and I'm standing still. Should I not be standing still in the first place, or like, um, not standing still is generally a good idea. But like, maybe I should be like pressing my buttons earlier yeah. more than like not pressing the right button. Yeah. So if you are standing still, you're at kind of a risk because the right. other person is going to be moving. They're going to be a moving target where it's harder for you to anticipate. And if they see yeah. that you're standing still, then they get to fuck with their movement to make it hard for you to hit them, right? Mm, okay. Oh. Okay, oh. the thing that I'll say about, like, Street Fighter is that, like... I think this is almost, like, reuse a good example of this, actually. One of, like, the best examples. But in general, hitting the sweet button in Street Fighter feels so good. Yep. Like, it's one of the most satisfying buttons, just, like, really consistently with, like, most characters. Um, and I've always loved, I've always loved that p button in particular. Yeah, sweep is excellent. Sweep is, is always a, like, it's a button that makes you feel feel smart when you hit it. Yeah, it just like it really it really gets people and it has that in Guilty Gear too, it has like good sound effects and mm. stuff. Like it has that satisfying pump. Yep. Um, let's see, I'm trying to think of other games that have been like in Well in a when when you imagine Ryu's sweep, do you think which one do you think of? Like the Street Fighter Four and Street Fighter Five one? Yeah, I think of that one actually because yep. I have more experience with yeah, it yeah, than yeah. like the, than the Third Strike one. Um, I'm trying to remember exactly what that one was like, but I do remember like the Street Fighter Three animation all looks like so good. Some of the best pixel art it of is, all time. Yeah. So the, the uh, pre, uh, I, I think it's pre Alpha Three. I want to say, his his fire or his uh, sweep was cancelable in the fireball, and it made it a really effective tool, 
And I love, like, to me, that is kind of the canonical ah. Ryu sweep. Uh, but yeah. I do think that as soon as you made it so as hard commitment you can't cancel into stuff, it made it instantly feel, like, more, m more sweepy, you know? Right, yeah, that's, like, one of the things that's, it, that's interesting about the sweep is that, like, a blocked sweep feels so bad. Yeah. Like... I think that's one of the things that's really great about designing a sweep in a fighting game in general. When it's bad, it feels so bad. When it's good, it feels so good. Yeah, there's there's no seven out of ten sweeps. Right, yeah. It's like it's an all or nothing proposition yeah. for sure. Fierce punch? I can imagine some seven out of tens. Yeah, Jazz, there's like, some like okay, it's like, oh, it's a fierce punch, sure. Um, um, it's cool. Focus on game. Oh, me a thing. Uh, I realized <laughs> I realized the other day that like I may not be the strongest fighting game player in the world, but there are not many people who could like play chip and talk at the same time. <laughs> Yeah, you should have a competition to decide who can who can talk and play fighting games at the same time. That'd be a good. <laughs> so I was I was a I was a debater in high school, and you know how there's like uh, chess boxing, right? Where you test someone's ability to like alternate rounds of chess and boxing. Um, no. I totally didn't know about that. All right, well, chess boxing is a real ass thing. I feel like it's something that is mostly played by Germans and Russians. Um, uh, but highly recommend checking it out just to see what it looks like. But I would totally do a version of chess boxing that was like uh, debate plus fighting game. <laughs> <laughs> At the same time. Yeah. Would be the key. All right, Lean, Lean Goy in chat telling me that chess boxing is actually Icelandic. Thank you so much for the clarification. Uh, no, that sounds right. I don't know why, but it sounds right. I, I saw that someone was like, oh, I gave up Viken. And I'm not giving up Viken, but I'm trying to decide. I'm trying to, like, I'm, I'm testing the field, guys. <laughs> I'm not ready for commitment yeah. yet. She says as she picks a literal <laughs> wife. <laughs> don't, don't tell Elfelt that for sure. Elfelt's gonna just I turn am. to the screen and be like, what? <laughs> oh, all of the characters. Um. God, I love Chip's voice acting a lot. It's it's really good. Um I love Um Oh, I did like a, tw uh, a a tweet about this at one point, but all of the um, the Jetta jump, I think it's jump kick mm -hmm. um, that Bayakia also has, yeah, and um, Izanami mm -hmm. uh, from Blaze Blue also has. Um, that's a really satisfying move. I actually really like. I know Izanami is infamous as being like. Um, if anything, probably the Elfel of, uh, Blaze Blue, sure. um, Central Fiction. But she is, like, really cool to watch, and her moves have a lot of, like, really cool motions where she's, like, she's doing these, like, super flexible things where she's, like, swinging her whole body mm. and, like, arcing her back completely. Um, it's very ballet-like, cool. and I love all of those animations a lot. Um, and they hit really savagely, um, as well. On that, on that note, Asriel, whenever Asriel is, like, punching a guy down, it really feels like he's punching a guy. Yeah. I, any, any character that has, like, some semblance of, like, pro wrestling ins inspiration, I'm like, okay, whoever, whoever, like, worked on you knew what the fuck they were doing. There's so much, it's so funny how much crossover there is it's really cute to see um, yeah. references like that with like with Lediva La and mm -hmm. uh um uh grand blue 
Have you um, have you ever uh, have you ever played the Sailor Moon fighting game for SNES? Oh, I saw a couple of those tournaments, but I've never actually played it myself. So there are there are many reasons to love that game. Not not the least of which is that it, it actually was an early Arxis game. Uh, they were, they were yeah, credited yeah, it differently, but it's yeah, I guess it is Arxis that made it. <laughs> and so there's some wild shit in there. Like every attack is like dash cancelable on block oh my on God. hit, um, and you can cancel out of block stun into any of your special moves, including like one frame command grabs. <laughs> yeah. So if you if you like if you try and like do something next to Sailor Uranus. She will just fuck you up because she's got a fucking oh my uh, god like giant. So that's why that's sick. But the other the other fantastic that's thing cool. about that game is that all the throws are like these amazing pro wrestling throws. <laughs> so it's that's really funny. So yeah, you just you just yeah, see like the like the sailor senshi fucking like uh, like DDTing each other and shit. It's amazing. <laughs> Yeah, I've seen like I've seen some like Uranus players, and it's really fucking funny to watch. <laughs> Uranus do all of these like spinning poly drivers. That's yeah, so Ur Uranus is fucking stupid as hell because she's got like her her dash basically helps her like moves her across the entire screen, right? Um, <laughs> and she's got a fucking one frame command grab. <laughs> so funny, I like. Her and like, is it is it Neptune or Mercury? I can't remember which one has like just like seven projectiles that like cover the screen. Mm -hmm. It's really fun to watch a really broken fire game. Yeah, a uh, fighting game. <sighs> yeah, there, like, there is there is there's a craft to making great fighting games that just make you want to keep playing them over and over and over. But like, there's also an incredible joy to playing bad fighting games. For real, I, I would love to play more, more like gimmicky games. Like I really wanted to play Ultra Fight Day Chaos. Oh, Chanta, yeah. Um. Chanta is fun as hell. So one of, like, one of the things I'll do with some of my old like arcade buddies who are local is we'll get together like once every month or two and I'll just bring like whatever I can find that they haven't played and we'll run like a tournament or whatever or we'll run money matches or exhibitions oh, shit like fun. that and we did count it once and it was amazing oh shit uh, I that so good. we got Cloud Zenus in here with the stylish Kai Av, have you been playing any any fighting games with Christine at all? Um, little Christine was gonna play Grand Blue with us, but I think she's been busy. Yeah. She was gonna play Charlotta. No. Um, which I think is probably a good fit for her playstyle, but um, Con considering the Wagner that she brought uh, to Uni, yeah, I'd say so. Yeah, I think that's the character she she wants to play. Um, it'll be interesting to see what other characters come out too. Um, I've been like also, so I've been playing Narmaya, but I've also been playing Fairy. Mm -hmm. And I think Fairy is like, well, with Fairy, I can definitely win a lot more. Sure. And I like, and I like actually that playstyle quite a bit. I'm actually like, I'm not even like the hugest Narmaya fan in the world. Mm -hmm. And I was kind of like expecting and hoping for her to be more of a Yuzuriha or Johnny. Yeah. Um, and I wanted to play that play style and she's kind of right, not. Right, right. Yeah, the the whole like EI swordsman uh, fighting game character is, is interesting yeah. to me. Cause- I love it. Yeah. And like thematically, it's always super cool. I always think of them as like the equivalent of like the sniper class in a, in an FPS. Oh yeah, kind where, of, yeah. Where it's like, I mean, snipers tend to be a little bit more kind of thematically unified, but with the EI character, you know that this character is going to be kind of hard to play, right? Right, yeah. Like, cause that's the fantasy. You don't want an EI character to be easy. Then they're not cool. Right, you want to be very stylish about it. And like, Narmaya doesn't really have, like, unfortunately, Narmaya is totally not 
actually. I would say that she's not an EI character. Yeah. Um, she's got like an EI type move, mm -hmm. but because it's not angled, she doesn't get to like make calls and control space in the way that like Yuzu Riha or Johnny gets to. Right. Um, in fact, actually, the EI character in like a in a like uh, low key like Street Fighter like game mm -hmm. is Poison. Yeah. Like I was, I like that game randomly for like a weekend, and I was like, oh, what's going on in Street Fighter? I was like, oh, Poison's in this game. I wonder how she plays. Mm -hmm. And I was like, this is an EI character. Yeah. <laughs> it's funny because like. When I think of the, the kind of the origin or like some of the core design that led to most of the, 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 the design patterns that you see around EI characters, it wasn't a samurai. It was Yamazaki from Fatal Fury. Oh, really? Yeah. Is he he the was one? the first one that I saw with the directional slashes. Huh. Oh. I've actually been wondering the, the wondering that very, very thing for a while, like where, who the first EI character was. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had, like if you look at him, he leaves a hand in his pocket the whole time because it's like the gangster shit, and then he just uh, whips it out. Oh my god, that's really cool. I want to get. I'm totally gonna look at that character. Ooh. And like, I think the first like EI swordsman character I ever saw in the fighting game was uh, Ukyo in a uh, in Samurai Showdown. But he right, doesn't yeah. play, he doesn't have the like diagonal or the, the angle yeah, slashes. He's, he's not actually like, he's, he's an EI swordsman who does not use like fighting game EI style. Yeah. Woo. Wait, you should keep me in the corner. I, Cause I do want to practice defense. Okay. I see, okay. Yeah, so it's tricky, okay. but you don't get to, you don't really get to swing on me if you're in the corner. Yeah. You you anti airing me from like that distance like finally made it click. Oh now I now I understand why I shouldn't do that. Oh wow, that's a lot of range. Okay. Good. Ooh. You could have totally anti-aired me in that circumstance though, right? Uh, if I didn't mess it up, yeah. <laughs> I was trying to. I was like, oh, she's gonna jump out. <laughs> I I knew the right answer, but I could not do, and so I did not know. That was helpful. I just wanted to know. I was like, oh, I got away with, it. but I that was like one of those things where it was like I don't want to continue doing it just because it paid off that one. Time. Yeah, and, that, and that's really good, right? Like learning outcome independence is a really hard thing to do in fighting games because uh, these games are mushy, right? Like. The difference between something working and something not working could be a matter of a couple frames. That doesn't mean that it was a good idea, right? And so learning to differentiate between this was a good idea and this worked but it wasn't a good idea is a huge part of the learning curve. Totally. Because it's like, you can do a thing that was the right idea and it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, Nehemiah is... Uses Iajutsu just to charge down. Yeah, exactly. Although it is one thing that's super a button that I love to press is that if you do, you can chain together your EI slashes, um, but there's a kind of like semi specific timing on it. I find that really fun to do. Mm -hmm. um, um, and I also, Narmaya's. Um, uh, her, her sword out stance, which is, I forget, I don't know the names of her stances, <laughs> um, but her, like, her alternate stance 
when she presses her he heavy buttons, she has like this giant axe that she swings out really fast. Um, and it like really like when it hits the edit the uh, enemy with it, it there's like a lot of weight to it. That mm -hmm. one feels like it, it's a really fun button to press in general. Oh, and she has like her jumping, um, her jumping unique button. Yeah. In her normal stance is this like really long horizontal slash. Um, and I'm still not very good at using it, but I've actually I I saw some some matches where some like high level players were using it in really creative ways as like a jump in oh, from, from really weird from really weird distances. Sure, because it's that actually, horizontal. Yeah, because it's that horizontal, and she can like combo into it. Um, yeah. Yeah, you might want to think about uh, L felt 5D as a, or not 5D JD as a similar tool. Yeah, no, it actually kind of is. Um, and I love that. That button is, I think, my favorite button to press with L felt. Mm -hmm. um, it's a good one. Like, it just carves that screen right off. Right. I need to get less. Uh, be pressing like uh, five five uh, H S way less so. Five five H is definitely a, like a noob trap because it feels so good and so useful. Yeah. Um, and it just. But I can tell it's killing me. Yeah. I knew it. Right. I <laughs> fucking knew it. <laughs> Damn. I was like, wait, so maybe now. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh my gosh. Ah, uh, shit, you stole my soul. Damn, that's what I get. I'm sorry, but you deserved it. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. I thought I had the mind game fun block. <laughs> I respect it. <laughs> Okay, so alternate question to the problem of how do I uh, get out of the corner mm -hmm. is how do I keep someone in the corner? Um, so answer one is if you're standing in a place where they can't easily air dash or jump over you, you're keeping them in the corner, right? Like. Mm. So one thing that might help, and, and I've used this analogy to varying degrees of success, but you can basically, like, the air is is a lot harder to play around in this game because people have multiple air options, right? Right. So you think about Street Fighter with a committed jump, right? Like, Street Fighter's jumps are fixed for the most part. There's not a whole lot that you can do to change your trajectory. And so when you see someone jump, your brain will fill in the rest of the angle and be like, or the rest of the arc, and it'll be like, oh, I know that in about this much time they'll be over here, so all I need to do is put a hitbox over here and we're good, right? right. Guilty Gear is not like that because everyone has at the very least a double jump and a tool that will change their jump arc somehow, right? Um, and so rather than think about like, jumps as uninterruptible arcs that you simply like you just wait you're the pot your your dragon punch is the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow right it's not like that in guilty gear mm -hmm. instead the way you want to think about it is, is a, it's a lot like smash when someone's trying to get back onto the stage the person on the ground has the advantage their attacks are just generally going to be more likely to win than the person in the air and uh the person in the air cannot stay up up there forever, right? Gravity is gonna take them down. Right. So the only question is where where they land. Uh -huh. So you start by just keeping, you start keeping someone in the corner just by standing there, right? You make them block some stuff. And then when they jump, and they have to jump to get past you, right? Yeah. Uh, you figure out where they're gonna be and you put a hitbox there that will beat them. Mm, okay. Now, with Elfelt, you can do a decent amount of this just by chucking Pineberry, right? Mm, right. Um, but some of it is a positioning thing. Some of it is, is understanding what the other character's options are, right? Potemkin doesn't have a fucking air dash. So if you keep him in the corner, 
like, he's going to have to go through you. And he might be able to do that with Hammerfall, because he's got armor. Uh, he might, like... Maybe he'll do, like, Heavenly Potemkin Buster just to get out of the corner. But different characters will have different mm -hmm. options. Yeah. And and so you need to know what those options are and shut them down. Mm. Woo! Okay. Damn. Good shit, Kev. And so, like... Okay, so there's keeping someone in. There's getting out. And then... So the, the actual... When it comes to, like, the actual mix-up for, for Elf Elf, like... Where do you really, like, start w with doing stuff that might actually land a hit on someone? Because if there's something that I've noticed, it's that you d I, I can't actually hit you yeah. when you're in the corner. Um, so like, there, there's kind of, there's two important things to keep in mind, right? One is, uh, if nothing else, every time you run back in at me, you can threaten with throw, right? Mm, yeah. So Elf Elf, Elf Elf, like everyone has a one frame throw, so if you set it up, that'll hurt, right? And it'll knock me down, you can set up some bullshit. The other thing is, you have yeah. an overhead, right? Your 6P is an overhead. Mm. So, yeah. you can set up some pretty basic mix ups just by forcing me to block Pineberry and then going in with like 6P or 5K or 5D or whatever, right? Mm. Um, or okay. throw, like you have options. But then on top of that, uh, Guilty Gear has a system called Risk, right? The way Risk, right. the way it, it's kind of like an inverted guard meter. So instead of uh, me losing guard meter and getting guard crushed when I'm uh, when I blocked too much, what Risk does is the more I block, the more my Risk meter builds. If I have Risk meter when you hit me, uh, damage scaling is delayed. So anything you hit me with. When I have when I have risk, it's gonna do more damage, right? Right. And what and what this effectively does is it means that if I'm just blocking, the next thing that I'm gonna get, get hit by is gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt a lot. Um, right. Once you build the risk, so you're, up, you're, you're, yeah. Oh, so you're essentially winning by making someone block. Yes. Not not only like in Guilty Gear, offense is just really good because characters' attacks are really good. But then on top of that, uh, risk means that if if you block the same mix-up twice, the second time will be more dangerous for you because the payout will be bigger. Right. So even if you just make me keep blocking, right, what, what's going to happen is, let's say I block the same mix-up over and over and over. If you, if you decide to change it, like... I have to I have to be able to react to that. And if I want to like swing on you, right? Let's say I'm thinking, oh, this is the time where I press like 6P because I've got the right timing to counter this one attack or whatever. It gets exponentially more dangerous for me as risk gets higher and higher. So you don't have right, to right. worry too hard about opening someone up, right? Like you'll get there. Okay. Elfelt has plenty of setups that will fucking hurt and lots of shit that's just hard to see coming. Um, but before you even get there, like right here, oh, okay, so he bursted me off there, but I probably could have killed him just because I had pretty, like, close to full risk built up on him, right? Right. Just making someone block is often enough, uh, to, to be winning. Woo. Oh, that was sick. Oh my god, the back turned anti-air comp. <laughs> <laughs> Also, what up, Idonis? Good to see you. Chat, sorry, I haven't been talking to you too much, but uh, AV is just that uh, entrancing company. <laughs> so we'll make this the last game for me, and then I'll close down the stream. <sighs> okay. Well, thanks so much for the lesson. Yeah. What, <laughs> what would you suggest that I start, like, practicing? Like... <laughs> I think that you should get some basic, and I say basic, but like basic good combos down with Elfel. Um, mm -hmm. Because, com like, once you have combos, then you have a reason to throw Pineberry and, and, and go in, right? <laughs> mm -hmm. 
Um, so you want to get a basic combo that ideally, like, you chuck Pineberry, you go in, you hit some buttons, you hit them, you knock them down, you chuck another Pineberry, you do that over and over and over. That's going to become, like, the, the core of your game, right? Without combos, you kind of don't get to play neutral in this game right. because you're not a threat, right? Like, neutral right. in this game is balanced around everyone being able to fuck you up if they touch you, like, two to three times. Right? Well, I'm chips, yeah. so two to three times. More, depending on who you are. Um... And if you don't have that kind of, like, basic lethality, uh, yeah. then, then what happens is no one has to respect you. So what, like... Alright. Follow-up question. Yeah. What counts as, like, a, like... <sighs> there's a lot of combos <laughs> to potentially know, right? Yeah. Um... And, like, I know so, somebody had, like, I was watching someone, like, talk about, like, what an essential, like, or the basic, like, LFL combo, which is, like, going to knock down off of, um, uh, Bridal Express or something, and then yeah. use it to drop a, mm -hmm. a Pineberry. Um, but, like, that's so weird to, like, even say, but it's, like, how much damage or, like, Maybe this is the real question is like, how bad can I get away with? You? Cause like, I can't, it's hard for me to go like directly into like the really difficult stuff. Yeah. Um, so where are you but looking- But it's also like kind where, of like hard to, to where know. Where are you like, looking for stuff? Say, uh, say that again? Where are you looking for elf elf stuff? Um, I'm looking at like so so there's Dust Loop. Mm -hmm. Um and then there's like the tutorials in the game yeah. itself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the I find that the tutorials in the game are usually good for uh uh for just learning concepts and past right. five or or uh, past like advanced five or six, it's usually more about um uh, showing you how different things can work unless you should do this. Okay. Um, hmm. Let me see if I can find... I feel like CT Warrior had a good Elfelt guide. Where can I find this? Sniper stance, no. got an anti elfeld guide well that is also useful <laughs> it's kind of useful just <sighs> yeah so honestly probably the best place to start here is uh hop by the elfeld discord oh strobe coming through thank you so much homie he's got the links he's got the links on deckington all right yeah so this is ct warrior has a good elfeld guide i'm gonna take a look real quick yeah, there's a lot of words here. And there's a lot of words here. <laughs> there is some, yeah, so I'd say th there's some decent useful stuff here. Um, but basically what I would say is uh, you want a combo that can reliably get them uh, from mid screen to as close to the corner as possible. And then you want combos which, once they're, they're, you're in the corner, you can do more damage, right? Mm, mm -hmm. um, so, like, a good a good kind of threshold to get with corner combos with Elfelt is, do you have a combo that you can extend with Pineberry? Ah, uh, okay. So, so, like, as an example, uh, you can do shit with, with Elfelt where you, like, throw a Pineberry at them in the corner, wait for, like, a second, and then, uh, and then throw them, and the Pineberry will explode in the recovery or in in the reaction from the throw which mm -hmm. means that you get to extend the combo off the throw for free okay um and yeah so being able to time your combo like this this is kind of the next level after you've got some some elfelt bnbs then you can start working towards extensions using pineberry um but yeah i'd recommend stopping by the elfelt discord because honestly they pro they'll know better than i will um okay and in general, I find Guilty Gear character discords to be pretty cool. Um, if they're 
better organized than the chip discord then they'll actually have like resources that you can refer to and stuff um but yeah in general okay, people cool. tend to be pretty helpful that's nice to know okay yeah. so oh. <laughs> I, i'm going to go ahead and uh shut the stream down i'll leave the lobby open so y'all can keep playing y'all should definitely keep playing that guilty gear we got a whole bunch of excellent folks in here um <laughs> av as long as you're playing idonis you're in good hands uh he's a whole lot of fun to play with Ooh. Um, and yeah, definitely, yeah. definitely check out the character discord. Can you like, uh, send me those links on discord? Yeah, I got Just, you. Uh, thank you so much. Cause I had, I closed down the stream cause I was worried that I was making my connection bad. Yeah. yeah. Right now, honestly, the internet is just bad. Yeah. Like, yeah, the whole internet, I think problem. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so to everyone watching the stream, Thank you to all the regulars for coming through, playing those games, showing support. I'm sorry I didn't get to talk as much, but I hope that uh, our, my, our conversation today got you got you all uh, coming away with something useful. To all the new yeah, folks here. So. Oh, what's thank up? Thank you so much for having me. Of course. It's always a pleasure. You're always welcome here. Um, and even if you don't want to hop on the mic, you're welcome to just hop by and play games. We've got a pretty wide range of people playing in these lobbies these days. Uh, so, And everyone is super cool about it. Um, so definitely just come through and play games like this is how you get better right you play you play with people you learn the matchups you ask questions like you hang out and chat it just it is it is the closest that i can come to like running my own venue with like nightlies and stuff so uh, definitely come through and play um to the new folks in stream welcome this is a community uh it is the coolest community on the internet and it's just about people trying to get better at things they love um super saiyan shoot real quick while I'm finishing the spiel, uh, if you're new here, I stream Monday through Thursday, 8.30 p.m. till around 10.30 or 11. So definitely come through. Just click that follow button. Um, and, and these lobbies are open to everyone who can fit. <laughs> Unfortunately, they only, hit, they only fit eight people. We are too big for uh, Guilty Gear's player matches. But anyone and everyone is welcome no matter what skill level. Though I request that you hopefully have good connection to the West Coast because Guilty Gear Netplay sucks. No one's trying to play in super lag. But these days we do what we can, right? Um, also, we'll be running more netplay uh, regular tournaments. So uh, this week, this weekend on Saturday, if you are in the area, if you're in NorCal playing on PC with a wired connection, you can enter the beginner and intermediate tournaments uh, on at, at CaliBurst. I think you should just be able to go to twitter.com slash pat the flip and see, I, I tweeted the CaliBurst registration link so you can find that shit. Oh, Rowman with a clutch link. Thank you so much. Um, and next week we'll be running another Wednesday night fights play uh, net play guilty gear. So for Oakland and hopefully SoCal. So definitely co come through for those if you're in the area. So I, I may stream over the weekend. We'll see. I've been trying to learn some melty on the side. Uh, just build those, those brolic ass fighting game muscles up even more. Um, and, uh, so I may stream some more there, but if I don't, I'll see you on Monday at 8 30 PM and all I need you to do is love your life, be good to one another, and play some Guilty Gear. We out, y'all. Mwah.